Hello, everyone, and welcome to American Thought Leaders Now. I'm Yanya Kellek. Today, our very special guest is someone you've seen before on the show and on Cash's Corner, Cash Patel, Senior Advisor to President Trump. Cash, so good to have you back. Jan, it's great to be with you. So what we're going to talk about today is the Oversights Committee report on January 6th. And I just wanted to mention something very briefly before we start, which is in July of 2022, we actually did a live hit in California where we talked about the authorization of 20,000 National Guardsmen. Mm -hmm. So how did we know about this two years ago? Well, Jan, the funny thing about the truth is it never changes. People's interpretations of it change. What people want to throw out it changes if they want to put on a disinformation campaign. But you had one of the first-hand witnesses in myself in the Oval Office days before January 6th with the president and his national command team where President Trump authorized 10 plus thousand National Guardsmen and women. We've been saying that since that day. That hasn't changed. I testified before the January 6th committee on it. I got subpoenaed by the special counsel's uh, Department of Justice on it. I've done media interviews across the country on it. It has never changed. That authorization occurred. We sent senior DOD employees to Mayor Bowser's office and the Capitol Police with Nancy Pelosi because they're responsible for DC. And consistent with DOD history and the law, they have to make a request for the National Guard before it can be deployed. President Trump step one authorizes it, like any president must, then they make the request, like any governor would, say in, uh, after a national disaster in California or any big sporting event in Kansas. Um, here it's DC, so it's the mayor. In writing, Mayor Bowser and Nancy Pelosi and the Capitol Police rejected it. We put those receipts out. It's their written word, not ours, but the mainstream media spent a number of years attacking that truth because it guts their narrative of disinformation, the campaign that they have put on about insurrection. And so um, it's nice to be vindicated, but the important thing is to get the truth out. Back then, and you know, when I first heard about this, I was kind of stunned. I remember we had that conversation, right? Mm -hmm. And you said, well, let me show you the receipts. And the receipts were not just one, but there's m multiple yeah. lines of evidence show that this actually really happened. And mm -hmm. this is what you've been going around, you know, kind of demonstrating to people, as far as I can tell, for the better part of the last two years. Um, so w what happened with the January 6th committee then? Well, it's pretty simple. We um, saw the January 6th committee essentially pull a Russiagate. Just like the FBI went before a federal judge back then and lied to him and withheld evidence of innocence to unlawfully surveil President Trump and put out the Russiagate narrative that Donald Trump's a Russian asset. Here, the January 6th committee with Liz Cheney um, and Adam Schiff and other individuals withheld one transcript, Jan, from the world, one. Tony Ornato, a career Secret Service agent, a political multi-decade um, officer in the Secret Service who was charged with presidential protection in, in and around the Oval Office and when the president moves, testified two plus years ago to the January 6th committee, corroborating and confirming President Trump's actions to authorize the National Guard days before January 6th with multiple statements under oath. And Liz Cheney buried and withheld that transcript until just recently. Why did she do it? Because this transcript singularly destroys the insurrection disinformation campaign that the January 6th committee and some of the mainstream media have put on. And to me, Americans should be gutted that they were robbed of the truth for so many years, just like Russiagate, and this time by another branch of government. Congress jumped in on the disinformation campaign action. Let's talk about this report in general. Um, what's your reaction to it? I think it's a good step in getting to the truth. What Chairman Loudermilk has done is expose the fact that evidence was withheld by members of Congress. Evidence was destroyed by members of Congress. Evidence of innocence was hidden by members of Congress. And evidence was choreographed by members of Congress and the likes of Cassidy Hutchinson. Another fact we now learn is that President Trump never lunged um, at the steering wheel of the beast. And why is that? Because the separate Secret Service officer who was driving the beast on that day said, 
President Trump never did that or anything close to that. So now what I want to do or what I want to call for is for the House of Representatives here to subpoena Liz Cheney and Cassidy Hutchinson and put them in a public hearing and ask them why they choreographed a lie, not just once, but at least twice. Why did they lie to the American people about such critical information? We know the answer. They needed the disinformation campaign of insurrection out there. They needed it to go to the courts of law and state and say, you have to take Donald Trump off the ballot. He committed insurrection. And they needed it to rob votes away from people who wanted to vote for, based on the truth. What do you mean exactly by not once but twice? Um, well, the two prime examples we've cited are the steering wheel, quote unquote, incident, and then the um, National Guard incident. So oh, these see. two key critical pieces of evidence that we've been testifying about for multiple years, the January 6th committee walked the American public knowingly into a lie, so it advanced their disinformation campaign. And I think they and every member of that committee needs to be subpoena. All the underlying documents, phone calls, text messages, and emails, government and personal need to be subpoenaed, and they need to be put on uh, under oath and interrogated. And I think some of them have committed crimes and that needs to be investigated. Yeah, so this is actually something that's in this report which is very disturbing. It's this destruction of evidence. We, we've mm -hmm. heard about this months ago now, but mm -hmm. this is now documents. So ex expand on that a little bit for me, please. I have a little experience in this as a former national security prosecutor and federal public defender. It's simple. <laughs> in a federal investigation of any kind, no one can destroy evidence. It's illegal. Kind of makes sense, right? You don't have to be a lawyer to know that. And what happens when government officials participate in the destruction of evidence? So it's not like there wasn't a case going on in the Department of Justice. Remember, they've been investigating Donald Trump with the special counsel for years surrounding January 6th. And if they had evidence of innocence and destroyed it or buried it, in my opinion, those are criminal actions. Whether you're a congressman or woman, or whether you're a staffer, or whether you're just a civilian witness, no one is allowed to do that. And I think the call to investigate these individuals is righteous, and America is owed that. So we've heard a lot over the past few years about what's called Brady evidence, colloquially, yeah. right? Which is this uh, evidence that could be exculpatory mm -hmm. right, for the defense. And then that's with, when that's withheld, that's highly problematic or should be highly problematic to judges. How does that work out in a congressional type scenario? So you can apply the, the, the legal standards logic to congressional hearings. Remember, Brady is only for prosecutions criminally in courts of law in state and federal courts. So right. here we're in the executive legislative branch. Right. But what they're not allowed to do is, as we said, destroy and tamper evidence when there's an ongoing federal probe, which there still is evidenced by the prosecution of Donald Trump. And if they knowingly withheld it and lied to America while they were delivering their report of the Jan 6 committee, then I think that's another problem, not just ethically for members of Congress, but also for individuals who say they put out the truth and lied to America. What would putting some of these people, or you're suggesting all of these people that were part of that committee under oath and question, what would that accomplish? We're at least owed the answers. Why did you do it? Who participated in it? How can you now say to the American people that this transcript of Tony Ornato and the other Secret Service agent should not have been made public before? How did you decide to selectively wormhole that information from the American public? And do you still believe that Donald Trump has committed insurrection? I think these are, are, are serious questions that many Americans were lied to about in terms of answers just to advance a political narrative that turned out to be false. So that's an initial step. I think there's a number of people that should be suing for defamation based on the testimony of witnesses that appeared before this committee, and I hope they take righteous action too. Well, what would be some examples of that? Well, you now see Tony Bobolinsky actually file a lawsuit against Cassidy Hutchinson for defamation. And mm -hmm. I don't want to comment on the contents of it. His pleadings speak for himself, but mm -hmm. That's a big step. And I think there was other lies told by Cassidy Hutchinson under oath. She's also subject to federal prosecution for lying under oath to federal officials. That's a felony. I don't know that this Department of Justice will endeavor to investigate it, but it's a crime. If I went up there and lied to federal investigators, I'm pretty sure I would be prosecuted. 
So there's also this other dimension to the report, which is the security and intelligence failures that this mm -hmm. oversight committee has documented. So is there anything new in there that you would like to comment on? The evidence that the FBI had days before January 6th that they withheld uh, that should have been shared with, say, me at the DOD and Department of Homeland Security, et cetera, for whatever reason was also buried by um, the FBI or sidelined. And I think that needs to come out in terms of why. Why wasn't that shared? Mm. I also think we need to figure out fully what the FBI's participation in and around that was when it comes to sources. Because if you rewind the tape, the FBI two, three years ago said, we'd never participate in that, no sources, no money. Now, they had so many sources in and around January 6th that the FBI had to commission a poll of all of its field offices to find out exactly how many. So I think we're owed the answers to this because American mm -hmm. taxpayer dollars were utilized in it. Mm -hmm. And how did the FBI know months in advance, because that's what it takes to employ sources into these types of operations, that something was going to happen on January 6th and then turn around and tell the American people they had no idea that January 6th was going to go the way it did? Hmm. Yeah, it seems like there's just so many different stories. And I guess this uh, report helps figure out a little more what was going on, but I feel like there's still a lot of unanswered questions. Like what would what would some of those be in your mind? There's, 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 to me, there are an enormous amount of questions. How many total sources were there? Government, FBI, otherwise. How much taxpayer dollars were put towards those sources and behind it? Hmm. How many FBI agents went up to Capitol Hill, including the director of the FBI, and misled Congress, perhaps even lied? What about other government agencies? I think the American people are owed that answer, those answers, and especially those being prosecuted for January 6th related offenses. I mean, mm. they, this Department of Justice and FBI have doubled down on January 6th. They've publicly said, we've prosecuted about a thousand people. We're going after the next thousand. They just arrested a journalist who was inside the halls of Congress on January 6th, reporting on January 6th and doing nothing else per the video that's been released. And they arrested him, charged him federally. Are we now going to arrest journalists in theaters of war because it's illegal for them to be there who are reporting on the war? You know, the standard is a very slippery slope. Um, there's this issue of the pipe bombs, actually. I'm gonna, mm. We're going to have a, an episode that we filmed with Julie Kelly uh, talking about what she's found with respect to this. So w w what's your reaction to that? As a former national security prosecutor, if there was a pipe bomb in the vicinity of the pr vice president of the United States, you put every asset you have in government on it. We have a video that shows someone who is involved in one of the pipe bombings utilizing the DC Metro subway and leaving and then the FBI supposedly lost them. I mean, how do we have no answers? Whether or not the devices were inert, thankfully they were, is irrelevant. Someone tried to stage a bombing next to the US Capitol that could have killed dozens of people during a day where thousands of people were around. So the FBI has been tight-lipped on it and I think we need to figure out from them what happened? Why is this investigation stalled? And we need to find out who the perpetrators were. That can't go unanswered. In a recent piece on, that we published on this topic, um, we have uh, William Shipley, who's the defendant for, I think, more than 50 now, uh, January 6th defendants. His view is that, that a lot of these prosecutions are politically motivated. How do, how, how do you respond to that? I think there's a lot of merit to that. I think you're seeing a two-tier system of justice go after people who are just there. And the Department of Justice has not hidden their intent to do so, i.e. this journalist. Mm -hmm. um, if you committed violent crimes, if you committed federal crimes, you should be, of course be prosecuted. I've always said that, whether it's January 6th or anything else. But to use the system of justice to go after your political opponents continuously, which is what they're doing for many individuals around January 6th, or over-sentencing them or overcharging them mm -hmm. is a huge problem that many of the judges in Washington, D.C. have signed off on. So that's a whole nother level of investigations that are going to need to occur in terms of oversight. Um, I don't think we've gotten there yet. Well, and there's also the scenario of some people being held in custody for extended periods of right. time so without trial. So there's just, it's kind of a, the pattern appears to all go in the same direction. Right. I haven't seen it go the other way. <laughs> I haven't seen people released mm. who are waiting trial for two plus years and held without bond. Though I did just finally see a Supreme Court case reverse some of the sentencings related to January 6th. So I think it's finally getting up to the Supreme Court. We may see some more changes. You know, for full transparency, you actually have a foundation, the Cash Foundation, that has been supporting some of these people. 
yeah, not just uh, folks that have been harmed by January 6th, but whistleblowers who have come forward and a whole host of other issues. So, look, the foundation's purpose is simple. If you've been charged with a nonviolent crime related to January 6th, the need money to pay for your rent, your mortgage, your kid's tuition, legal bills, you know, we're going to try and help you out as best we can. It's um, a lot of these folks just don't have the means to fight this kind of behemoth um, in terms of a prosecution. Well, Cash, any final thoughts as we finish for today? You know, I leave the audience probably with this in terms of the insurrection exoneration, as I now call it. Forget everything I've ever said. Forget my testimony. Put everything we've set aside. How is it factually and legally possible for Nancy Pelosi, the Capitol Police, and Mayor Bowser to reject the National Guard if President Trump didn't previously authorize? To me, that's the whole case. And now that we have the receipts, well, we've always had them. Now that they're there for the American people, maybe they can answer, ask those hard questions and finally get to the truth. Well, Cash Patel, it's so good to have you on again, and we'll have you back soon. Thanks, John. Have a great day.